Hello, good afternoon. It is September 19th, um, and I am excited to be welcoming you to a webinar with one of our newest Wills vendor partners, um, Comics Plus, which is powered by Library Pass. Um, they are going to be talking to us today about uh, all of the great things that Com Comics Plus can offer for our K-12 members. Um, joining us today, we've got um, Alexandra and Beth. Alexandra is going to be present. No, you wanted to be called Alex. Alex, uh, you know what? It's fine. Gonna... <laughs> Alexandra's great. <laughs> went to all the trouble of asking her earlier, and then I just read it off the screen like a dope. <laughs> Alex is going to be presenting uh, to us today, and without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to her, Alex. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, and thank you everybody for taking time out of your schedule to join us live or to join us on the recording. Um, I know and recognize that as uh, you know, educators, K-12 librarians, y'all wear a lot of hats and your schedules are pretty jam packed. So we are super grateful to have the opportunity to spend some time with you. Um, I have this screen pulled up here, and I guess I would just ask somebody in the um, chat to confirm that you can see my screen. It looks like all systems are go. Awesome. Um, we have a QR code set up here um, for folks who, if you'd like to sort of follow along while we're live in the Comics Plus platform, um, this is going to take you to the demo site for our K-12 all access collection. So this will have everything from our elementary school collection, which starts at emergent readers uh, through our high school collection, which sort of ends through young adult readers. Um, so if you wanna follow along, if you're an active listener like I am, which you'll notice from my enthusiastic hands throughout the presentation, um, definitely go ahead and feel free to use that QR code to hop on the platform yourself and explore while we look together. Um, the other thing I want to mention is everything on that demo site is available, except you won't be able to check out any titles and you won't be able to open the My Shelf functionality. Um, we'd be really happy to put a link to request a demo in the chat, uh, as well as in a follow-up with um, this slide deck. We actually have a link to the form in here at the end that we'll send out uh, to Jeff to distribute. So if you want to access those things, so you can read some titles, see how the My Shelf functionality works. We're always happy to set up that demo access so that you can take a look for your review. Uh, and today, I wanted to organize our time into sort of three different parts of the school and of the school day that um, our K-12 library partners have had a lot of success implementing Comics Plus and our content. So the first one is in the classroom. The second is after school, clubs, extracurriculars, things like that. And the third is as a school-wide resource. Um, that being said, I am not gonna take us through a slide deck. So um, please don't think that I'm just gonna read off of the screen to you for the rest of the presentation. We wanted to just sort of uh, provide this um, document that we'll send after the fact so that you have something to look back on uh, and a reference point of what we talk about today in case it's helpful for your evaluation process. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and hop into that K-12 all access demo so that we can see things in action. So, that first bucket that we talked about is Comics Plus in the classroom. Um, we have had a lot of success. We have a, a, an engagement specialist team who partners with our library partners after they've come on board with Comics Plus to make sure that they are seeing the usage uh, and have the proper training, uh, experience, professional development that they need to be successful with Comics Plus and to make sure that they get that return on investment, which we recognize is also important. Um, one of the key areas that we have had a lot of success is obviously implementing into reading and ELA programs. Um, I'm gonna start by showing y'all and talking about one really fun example, which is uh, centered on Bram Stoker's Dracula, which feels very appropriate now that all of the pumpkins and spooky decorations are out in the stores. Um, we had a school who Going to switch this to adaptations so it's specifically just graphic novel adaptations we have tons of adaptations of literary classics here these are all the ones we have of bram stoker's dracula uh, and what this school partner did they were a high school the library really wanted to get students excited about their digital resources and about comics plus and they partnered with a colleague in the theater department who wanted to put on a production of dracula 
So what they did is they trained the students, showed them how to use Comics Plus, uh, and they showed them how to find these different versions and different adaptations so that the students could read them together, look through different takes, look through the artwork specifically, and draw inspiration from these graphic adaptations of the novel so that they could design their costumes, so they could get ideas for the set, so that they could get ideas for their script, for blocking, all of those things. Uh, and so it was a really, really cool collaboration between the library as well as the theater department to get students excited about their e-resources, but also to give them some inspiration for their own production and kind of help them steer the ship a little bit more to learn about those important aspects of putting on a play. Uh, one of the things that made this possible that Comics Plus um, has really sort of always offered as our access model is that we are an unlimited simultaneous access. So that means there's no limit on the number of copies of a title. All 25 students in that theater class could access this version of Bram Stoker's Dracula and nobody is gonna get waitlisted or turned away. Um, it's great for the library circulation because you're gonna get all 25 of those checkouts. It's also great for students uh, and great for classroom use because you can have an entire class accessing the same title or titles without it affecting either um, their ability to get into it at the same time or your budget. We keep it at a flat annual rate so there's no cost per checkout or anything like that. Uh, another really great example sort of on the <laughs> other end of the educational spectrum for our younger readers uh, is that the collection is chock full of leveled and decoded books. Actually, I'm going to pull this one up in my account. Uh, this book is called Scary Scott. Again, very appropriate for this time of year, which is uh, September 19th, if anybody is joining way after the fact. I'm going to continue reading where we left off. And Scary Scott is a great example of one of the level books that we have in here. Uh, so at the very end of the book, which I've just sort of navigated to using our arrows in the reader, um, and it has this guided level reading at the end to kind of help you determine where your reader's comfort levels are and how they're doing understanding the material. Um, we have tons of titles like this. So while Spooky Scott is very appropriate for this time of year, uh, there's tons of other content for our learning and emergent readers within here that is not sort of exclusive to Halloween. This is just one of my personal favorites. Um, so, you know, again, the reading and ELA programs that we've worked with have really benefited from, from having access to Comics Plus, not just because of the content, but also because of that uh, access model. Um, in addition to reading and ELA, uh, we also have a ton of content for your core classes. So I'm going to do a quick search here for Max Axiom. Some of y'all may be familiar with this series. A lot of people people have like physical versions of these books in their library. Uh, we have a potential library partner in South Carolina who I met with like a month ago. And um, one of her sort of main hurdles that she's tackling this year in her budget is that a considerable amount of her library budget has to go towards uh, either repairing or replacing physical textbooks for uh, the core departments and other subject areas. So she had uh, one science class in particular that had a lot of chemistry and sort of <laughs> experimental components to the course as per the curriculum. And so the books were just getting incredibly messy and students weren't really reading them. So they need that reading content comprehension and they need access to the information to start building your own independence and their own autonomy in, I need to read this and then we're going to come to class and do an experiment on it. Um, but A, they weren't engaging with the material and B, when they're out in the classroom, they're getting, you know, like baking soda and vinegar all over them, other things like that. And so they have to be replaced really frequently. And it was cutting into her budget in a really, really uh, detrimental way, as you can imagine. And when I showed her these Max Axiom comic books, she kind of had this light bulb moment where she was like, you know what, I'm going to sit down with our science teachers. I'm going to show them these. Essentially what these are are nonfiction graphic novels going over different scientific uh, concepts. So there's one uh, that's on the, the scientific method. They take this character, Max Axiom, who's kind of like a superhero scientist, and they use him to kind of create this engaging 
almost like <laughs> universe where he is explaining scientific concepts that are important in developing an understanding of these different things, but also in a way that makes it a little bit more engaging for students. Um, I'll also say that having the context of the pictures and having it in this format can be really beneficial to some of the struggling readers as well. Students who may not be reading up to their grade level yet or who need a little bit of extra assistance to have the context of the uh, artwork within this can really help them build confidence and also help them stay on pace with their other uh, you know, fellow peers. So Max Axiom is one that I love talking about. Um, social studies is another area where Comics Plus has a lot of really great content. Um, I'm going to hop back into my shelf over here on my personal demo, and we'll take a look at uh, another book that I love. It's called Black Heroes of the Wild West. Uh, this is a nonfiction graphic novel. Uh, it goes over the lives of a number of different important people in our history. One of my favorites is Mary Fields. Her, her uh, nickname was Stagecoach Mary, which I think is totally awesome. Uh, she was the first Black woman to be employed as a star route postal worker in the United States. Um, she was totally rad as you can see as she like fends off these wolves with a torch in her hands uh and she's the first chapter of this book so if I go back a couple of pages it starts with I think just a picture of her oh, there we go oh I went too far uh so it kind of shows you like this is the actual person that we're talking about but it's still very much in the context of a graphic novel. So it's got the onomatopoeias, it's got the artwork, it has sort of the setup and the drama of the shot, the way that your graphic novel is, but it's delivering critically important information about our nation's history and about this amazing person that we're learning about. Uh, and so again, it provides sort of a, a more engaging way to teach social studies, to get students excited about doing assigned reading, um, and to, again, support some of our struggling readers who are still developing confidence uh, and have that context of the artwork in the context of, uh, you know, what they're going to be tested on, which is really, really cool. But finally, for in the classroom, which, uh, as you can tell, I get very excited about talking about, and we have a lot to talk about, but we've got other things to address, so I'll be quick with these. Uh, we've got tons of contact, like, um, thanks for health and nutrition. There's a title called Healthy Snacks, Healthy You. This is going to be for younger readers. Um, it just talks about basic nutrition things, making good choices. Um, it's nonfiction. It's considered STEM and STEAM. It's kind of school life, slice of life. Uh, that's a really great title. There's also um, tons of art books. So within the categories page, so give me an opportunity to show you another part of the platform. Within the categories page, we have uh, two that have been really beneficial to art departments at some of our K-12 library partners. Um, we have these art books, which give you an incredible collection of um, you know, exploring the artwork from maybe some of their favorite franchises. There's artwork from Star Wars, artwork from Zelda, artwork from Mario. They're seeking out some inspiration for like a graphic design project or even like a painting. Um, they have tons and tons of books on the artwork of some of our favorite IPs in popular culture, which we know always gets students excited when they recognize it. Uh, and it's a character that they love. There's tons of Disney content in here, which my two and a half year old is a big fan of, especially after we visited the mouse himself last week. Um, and then we also have this um, techniques area, which is going to have actual like how to books. So how to draw different series. I like to draw dogs and cats. There's like a how to draw manga with a number of different sequences within that. So um, there's really a lot here that can help supplement even outside of just your voracious, excited comic book, graphic novel and manga readers. Um, and we also do offer a, a beautiful collection of picture books, which is new to our collection this year, um, which is obviously great or, you know, reading at the library, reading in the classroom, uh, kind of leads me into my next point, which is after school or outside of the classroom. One of the biggest things that our library partners love Comics Plus for is uh, Comics Plus as an independent free reading resource. So obviously we have an incredibly expansive collection here, but the unlimited simultaneous access model also allows students to, um, I'll show you, for example, in my shelf, because there's not a limit on the number of copies. Oh dear, 
I lost my shelf. Um, because there's not a limit on the number of copies, we'll just speak from my from my heart here, you can add as many books as you want. So I didn't get the chance to, to scroll down, but I have like four rows at this point of books that are checked out on my shelf just from doing demos and from you know sharing books with my own kids at home. Um, they can build a running TBR list of series that they love and put all of those books on their shelf so that if they have like spring break and they want to, you know, just eat up an entire new series, they can add 10 books in the same series to their shelf. It's not going to affect any other students' ability to access that content. Uh, and it's also not going to affect their ability to read something new. If they've decided actually I'm bored with the series, I don't want to move on to something else. Um, so it, it really supports independent free reading in that aspect. Um, it's also great for things like story time. So we have, like I said, a new collection of picture books that we are exceptionally excited about in our categories here. Um, if the library has something like a television screen or a projector, this can be a great way, especially if there's something that uh, you really want the students to focus on. If you're like, hey, what do you notice in the background of this picture? in I really want to fly to the moon. What's a context clue that we can get from this? You can zoom in within the screen uh, and you can also just sort of make it bigger and more inclusive for larger classes, uh, as well as like things like, um, like entire class reads. If everybody in the class is assigned to read a book, they could all access it on their own device or even you know check it out and read it when they get home. I know my son, every time we go to a library story time, wants to read that book again and again. We'll get to bedtime and he'll ask for the book we read at story time. And a lot of, I think, younger kids, especially developing readers, they want to revisit the same content that they like and that they've been read before. And sometimes that can pose a challenge, especially for um, you know parents who they may not have access to a copy of uh, Really Bird, Really Scared that you guys read in your library class this morning. But with Comics Plus, it's super easy for that student to access it. And then mom and dad can read it for their bedtime story that night as well. And everybody wins, assuming the child goes to bed, speaking as a tired parent. <laughs> um, finally, the last part of, of Comics Plus, um, or I guess of the school that, uh, that Comics Plus has been, um, I think, really helpful and really successful in supporting is sort of school-wide programming. So I'm going to search for a title called Awkward. This is a book about two students who are both sort of competing to have, um, I did not mean to click that, two students who are competing to have their clubs featured in the school carnival. Only one of them is going to get featured, so they kind of have to compete for the principal's uh, like approval of which club is going to be featured in the carnival. Um, we had a library partner in Virginia, it was a school, um, I believe it was a, a school district who did like a school wide read. They would use their homeroom time where everybody was getting together at the same time during the day uh, to read from this book together as a class. Uh, students would also have access to it on their own through the library's website. And um, after they read the book, and use this as this like really intentional time for their homeroom. Students were then tasked with developing their own ideas for clubs. And um, I actually think that now that particular school in Virginia has a crochet club as a direct result of this really cool thing. Um, but what it really did is it helped foster a sense of community within the school. So everybody's reading the same book which they can access because of that unlimited simultaneous access model. And they're also all talking about it in a way that's going to enrich their community by adding new clubs, focusing on the interests of their student body uh, and taking action to make those interests more accessible and shareable with their peers and with their teachers, which is uh, one of my favorite personal examples of, of how Comics Plus has kind of helped foster something school-wide like that. I can't wait to hear more about it. I think they're going to do it again this year with a new class of students. So um, TBD on what fun stories and new clubs they develop as a result this year. Um, it's also really packed with content that's great for counselors. So there's one called Emotions Explained with Buff Dudes. It's one that one of our specialty, uh, our engagement specialists loves talking about. Um, it really focuses on emotional intelligence, navigating really big feelings, but it creates this um, 
sort of humor around it in a way that makes the content super approachable, uh, makes it a little bit less scary to uh, approach. And I think, you know, emotional regulation is something that we're all working on, especially throughout childhood. And as you're developing through adolescence, big feelings can cause big challenges. And so having things like books that you can share with students uh, during particular challenging times during their, their school careers um, while they're navigating changes either like to a new school or at home. Um, we have tons of great t uh, titles that can help support that, that the, li that the counselors would just have access to because the library has them. Um, and again, they can have as many kids reading the same books as they want. There's one really sweet one that I like for younger kids called A Difficult Thing. And it sort of centers on this puppy dog. And it's uh, about the importance of admitting mistakes. This is one that I've looked at with my son a number of times. It includes a discussion guide to help readers and to help students kind of further discuss making mistakes and taking ownership of them uh, and things like that. So there's, there's going to be content like this from everybody from emerging readers like my toddler to, uh, to high school students who may be navigating scary things like what am I going to do after high school and um, you know stuff like that. So just sort of one additional way that we are able to support school-wide initiatives uh, with just this one mighty platform. Uh, that being said, We've got about eight minutes left, and I want to make sure that we have some time to address questions if there's anything like that in the chat. So um, two things that I'd like to show you that are not directly on the platform that I think might be helpful for your evaluations. We have all of our age-appropriate guidelines available online. So uh, we find it very important to be transparent in how we have curated our collection. Um, whereas some e-content providers are just sort of like a, an open pipeline of content, Comics Plus is very intentional in how we do our collection development. We have uh, one guy and his assistant who actually add and upload and comb through this material before it's uploaded to make sure that it falls within these parameters, to make sure it doesn't include disinformation, propaganda, anything like that. So we have uh, a number of different sort of age ranges that we have set out. Uh, and this is our framework for how we curate our collections. So in the guidelines, you will see who these readers are, what the formats you'll find for these readers are, the language that you'll find, uh, content. The, the older ones will have educational value as well. Um, and then it'll also include a link to what comics, comics Plus package they are included in. So it'll give you an idea of like, okay, so the ele elementary school package is going to have content for emergent readers, children readers, and kids readers per our age guidelines. Um, we think this is important for a number of reasons. A, so that you know how seriously we take curating our collections for our end users, because we know a lot of our most voracious readers are kids, teenagers, um, you know, people who we want to make sure are reading appropriate content, but also so that you can share with your communities who you're partnering with. Here's how they made these designations. Um, we also recognize that this is a moving target and that it's gonna vary from community to community. So there are tools within our admin center as well where you can curate your collections additionally to make sure that your collection reflects your community and serves your student body appropriately. So there are ways to, to additionally curate your collections as well. Um, finally, the last thing that I'd like to show is our robust resource center that our colleagues has developed. Um, we are very fortunate to work alongside a number of librarians. Uh, we also have a former reading teacher who is running our customer success team. So this is something that we're super passionate about, providing tools to our library partners so that you can start integrating this into what you're already offering at the library without having to reinvent the wheel. We've got tons of marketing materials, posters to hang up in the library. Uh, you can put bookmarks in your physical comic books. So if you have like the first three books in a graphic novel series that's super popular, um, but the series is like 10 books long, you can pop this, uh, this bookmark in the end of it and say, hey, if you're enjoying this, you can continue the rest of the series on Comics Plus and drive people to the platform that way. Um, we've had tons of people do that. We've got an entire section dedicated to comics in the classroom. So what I gave you is like a very top level overview compared to what our librarian uh, peers and colleagues at Comics Plus have developed. They have entire programming here uh, and reading guides for things like Steam, uh, using graphic novels for personal narrative mentoring, uh, making classic literature more accessible, things like that to kind of help 
stimulate ideas and, and help integrate Comics Plus into the curriculum that you offer and the programs that you're already uh, developing for your student body. I'm gonna take a quick breath and attempt to see if there's anything in the chat here. Um, is there anything that you'd like to see on the platform? Uh, any questions that you may have at this point? Um, anything that I can clarify that I've already talked about? Um, again, please feel free to use the chat. I think I've got it pulled up here, but um, I'll just take a, a drink here and wait and see if anything comes in. If not, I'll revisit that slide deck and tell you what you can expect from us as a follow-up resource. Okay, I don't see anything coming in on the chat. So um, let me revisit this presentation that I put together for y'all. Um, essentially what this will include is an overview of what we talked about, about incorporating Comics Plus into the classroom and other ways that uh, our library partners have used us. It'll include screenshots of some of the titles that we looked at today and some other ones that our customer success team have uh, recommended and have had library partners use. Um, it's also gonna include this page, which has some helpful links that hopefully will aid in your evaluation process. So there's a link to our vendor partner page for Comics Plus on the Wills website. Um, we do currently have a discount offer in place. My colleague Beth Hollis is on the phone here. Uh, I know she'd be really happy to schedule a follow-up conversation to talk about your, your individual school budgets and what the discounted pricing that's available to you is right now. Um, there's also links to request a demo to Comics Plus, a link to uh, that resource center that I just showed you with all of the great assets that our team has developed, uh, as well as a link to our age-appropriate guidelines so that you you can take a look at those uh, in greater detail. And I'm going to stop my screen share there and say again, uh, thank you so much to everybody who has joined us live today, to everybody who might be checking out the recording after the fact. Uh, we recognize how busy your schedules are and we're really grateful that you've taken time to learn more about us uh, and we hope to have the opportunity to speak with you soon. Thank you so much, Alexandra. I thought that was really a great uh, tour of the resource. Um, I'm completely on board with uh, comics as as what I think is a an untapped vector of education. I think I I, I think I said this in a, in a meeting with the Comics Plus folks recently. I'm about as geeky as it gets, but for whatever reason, comic books are never my 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 geek hype growing up but as an adult i've i've seen that uh it's a really an art form that i enjoy personally and i think really can be super super uh useful in the educational setting as well oh yeah well and i will say this is a safe space for that because when i came into comics plus i was pigeonholed into thinking that comics were all like superheroes and sci-fi and now i have been given some gateways into it that are on my desk here <laughs> And it's become a new uh, nerd vice for me because I was more of the Lord of the Rings category. Sure. And now I'm, I'm transitioning towards the, the graphic novels and the manga. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for showing us around. Um, yeah, thanks yeah. for having us and for coordinating. Uh, yeah, it's our pleasure. I would say anyone watching or, or now or, or watching the recording, please feel free to reach out to us here at Wills. Um, you can see um, Beth Hallis is here on screen as well. She's kind of the, the rep. Uh, I'm sure anybody uh, at Comics Plus will be happy to hear from you as well. Um, if you've got any questions, um, let us know. If you're looking for pricing, of course, you probably already know how to request pricing from Wills. Um, yeah, anything Anything last thing to say, uh, Beth or, or Alex? We should all be reading more comics. This is true. <laughs> the power of comics. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Well, thanks again. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for presenting, Alex. Um, and um, all right. We'll we'll see you all again uh, soon. I'm sure. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye.